my talk will will give another perspective for what happens at, at the present because I am talking about well I start from the very beginning of the earth and then uh, well and uh, just at the the present time in geology we usually say that well just the past is the future to the is a, is a key to the future and that's what I would like to show you that we have not well the climate of the earth has not rise of anything but it, ha it, it has a long history. Uh, yeah, if you look at the general, at the history of the Earth, we can, well, the Earth has survived all what has been possible. It was completely frozen from the poles to the, to the equator, as you can see at the first uh, plan here. That's uh, even this stage of the, is this phase of, of the Earth is known as the Snowball Earth where the glaciers existed at the equator. Uh, but there were also some other periods in which uh, the glaciers were limited to the more uh, northern and southern territories. And even there were also times where there were no glaciers or almost no glaciers uh, on the Earth. So the, the, we, we are now at present, we can say that we are somewhere in between these two stages and we can say that it's quite a good time for, to live. Uh, if we look at the history of the Earth. So the, the, the scenarios which, uh, which existed on the Earth uh, were probably the same as they, we, we can find them uh, today. Of course, the, 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 the flora and the fauna is different, but the relief was probably like this as we can find it now. Uh, why geologists talk about climate? I usually have such a question, is asked, I am asked such a question, why do we uh, are engaged while you are busy with climate. It's, it should not be our business. We should talk about something else. Well, geology is a past science. Uh, and I must say that, well, that's... Uh, I, I, well, I, I, in a moment I just tell you why, why we can speak about it. Uh, my main issues of my uh, talk are given here. I would like to say at first some words about the major climatic events on the ancient earth, then about mass extinction, which is a very, very mysterious uh, part of the earth's history, then about the changes of uh, temperature and uh, atmospheric CO2 uh, in the atmosphere during the last five million years. Uh, of course, there are some information what has happened uh, earlier, but uh, and I would also mention this as well. And then uh, how the present climate on the Earth was established. Uh, it has started to be established about 15 million years ago, and step by step we came to the situation which is now, now on the Earth. So, why geologists speak about the climate? Well, we can say that geology is just history of the Earth, and history of the Earth is a history of climate. That's why we talk about it. And uh, we can find out it uh, just studying the rocks. Rocks uh, record all the events which has happened in the history of the world, and there is also a lot of information and about the climate as well. Of course, we, we are not able to, 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 to find out what is uh, hidden in the rocks uh, with, a, uh, with a precision which would be needed to, to just to, 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 to have something like uh, the knowledge about the climate like we have about the present climate, but still we are working on it and step by step we, we, we have more and more information about it. Here is a very short history of the climate of the Earth, which is limited mostly to the temperature which occurred on the Earth starting when, uh, when we can talk about it, this is about four and a half billion year where the history of the Earth has, uh, has been uh, initiated. The Earth mean, uh, meant as a solid planet uh, when we can talk about it. And uh, with these blue, the, these blue lines indicate the, the catastrophic uh, coolings which occur on the Earth, uh, major glaciation. Uh, on the Earth, uh, the, the red ones are just uh, warmings which occurred over here. But if we, if we look at this line which is here, uh, which is well something like the normal the climate which we have at present, and uh, if we look uh, what is below this, uh, this line, this line uh, indicates where the, the Earth, uh, there was much warmer on the Earth, and uh, the, the curve sh uh, above shows when it was cooler, we see that the Earth history is, the, is a history of warming. 
which occurred mostly on the Earth. The, the coolings were, were uh, well, that, that's only a part of the, a smaller part of the Earth's history, but it is also very, that is very important. Uh, well, first of all, uh, what we can s suggest, uh, what has happened to the Earth, why the Earth, uh, uh, what, uh, well, we know that all that the, 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 the Sun is the most important factor of the, of the climate on the Earth. And uh, there is also a hypothesis on the faint young sand paradox. We, uh, we find out uh, from the geological data that the sun was presumably uh, had, had lo was smaller and had, uh, was less luminous, about 30% at the very beginning. So this is about 4 billion years ago. Uh, and uh, although uh, so the, the insulation should be much smaller, but well, other data do not suggest such, I mean, the biological and geological evidence points out that this young Earth was uh, as warm, but was not cooler than at present. Uh, probably it was even much warmer than, than it is at present. And of course, this has changed uh, in time. Uh, it was called. It was made by the the, 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 the sun insulation, sun activity has increased due to to thermonuclear reactions which occurred on the uh, on the sun. If we look at the atmospheric pressure of CO2 and O2, because we should we should talk about these two uh, two elements, which are the most important uh, the, the most important elements in the uh, Earth's atmosphere. Then we can see that the, the at first the, the CO2 was predominant one. From the very beginning, when we can have some information, we see that uh, that well we can see this. These values, which are here, which show what was the, how much the CO2 was in the atmosphere, and it was gradually decreased. This uh, this curve does not show everything what happened during this time because there were uh, a short breakdown of these CO2 contents in the atmosphere. But uh, the general trend is like this: we are now at the low, uh, the low content of the CO2 in the atmosphere as well. Uh, and uh, we, we can see this present uh, CO2 pressure is uh, like here, and uh, the lowest one uh, during the quaternary, that is the last three million years, uh, was a bit lower, and but it's almost the same. It's not not a great difference. What has happened to the to to to, to the oxygen which occurred in the atmosphere? It, uh, we have uh, undoubted uh, evidence for that. Well, I mean, the evidence which shows that there was some more significant value, the contents of uh, oxygen in the atmosphere, in the air, uh, some uh, about two, two billion years ago. But at first it was low, then it was uh, well, almost close as the one in the present atmosphere. Then there was a peak of uh, oxygen almost uh, twice as much as, as, as today, uh, and then uh, the, the, uh, the O2 uh, content decreased to, to this value which we have at, at present. Uh, as we know from the history of the Earth, uh, too much uh, oxygen in the air is not very, very good. As we know, we, we, cannot, we could not uh, exist in such a situation where the, there was no any other gas, for example, in the atmosphere, but only oxygen. So uh, too much oxygen is dangerous, of course. Uh, well, what has happened to this to this CO2? CO2, which was uh, so so much of them uh, of this CO2 was in the atmosphere. Well, that was well. Uh, usually, we say that uh, that's uh, well. The CO2 was uh, combined uh, in the, 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 the well in the by the vegetation, and it was put mostly uh, in fossil fuels, and that's the main source of uh, of vegetation. That's wrong. Most of CO2 is the stored in, in limestone uh, deposits in the sea. It's uh, well, uh, and we can see that uh, we, well in the, the past that uh, well if there is such a situation as here, you can see if there are, uh, if there are uh, vast shallow areas of the sea where, the, for example, the algae could live could exist at that time, they combined. They took the, the CO2 from the atmosphere, put uh, connected with the other, well, basically with uh, with calcium, and made limestones, uh, limestone thick, uh, thick deposits of limestones at the at the at the bottom of the sea. 
uh, if uh, the sea uh, if the sea level has collapsed as you can see here then these shallow areas where where this plankton uh, organism could exist uh, these shallow areas were very small, were very limited, and in the time there was an excess of uh, CO2, and this excess of CO2 uh, was emitted, uh, was uh, just uh, went into the air. So that was the main reason which made that we had such a such a difference between the in the atmosphere content, where there were area times where there was there was more uh, CO2 in the atmosphere and there was less. Uh, CO2 in the atmosphere, but that was has not been caused by just by the, by releasing from the fossil fuels, but basically uh, by deposition of uh, by deposition or not deposition of limestones at the uh, at the bottom of the sea. So, if we look at uh, this atmosphere at the very beginning uh, and the pressure which we can, uh, which I can suggest uh, uh, of uh, different uh, gases, uh, basically of, of uh, oxygen, you can see that at the very beginning it was very small, then it was a bit uh, higher, but not very high. And then uh, it has increased, as you can see here, but that was already in the time just about six, uh, six, seven, uh, six, seven million, 100 million uh, years uh, ago. The, the atmosphere was almost the same, or it was, of course it has changed, but it was almost the same. But what has happened before? These black lines which I indicated here, the, these are large glaciations which occurred in that time, in the time when the, the atmosphere was predominated by greenhouse gases. Uh, so uh, these the, these were very large uh, glaciation which occurred. The first one were about three million years or somewhere like this. Then these ones we know much better, much more about it, and then it has repeated once and after the other. Maybe that there could be also some other glaciation be in the in between these two, but uh, so far no uh, information uh, exists on that uh, on that subject. Uh, the most important, the most uh, astonishing was uh, the, the, the time when the whole Earth was uh, glaciated. As we know, it has lasted about five million years that there were glaciers starting from the poles and ending at the equator. Some of them are floating on a, floating on a sea, they form just uh, ice shelves on the sea uh, close to the equator. But the temperature, as we suggest, the temperature of the time was very low. Uh, it was something, well, generally they speak that was something, the, the global temperature on the Earth was something like about minus 50 de degrees centigrade. Uh, well, that's, that was also because the, there was, there was uh, the, well, the, 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 the Earth was covered by ice. There was a, the, the albedo has completely changed, so the insulation could not enter the, the surface of the, of the Earth. But then it has, it has also uh, changed uh, as well. So uh, here are four, four, four possibilities for such, for such thing. Uh, how could it happen? First one is here. So the whole Earth is, uh, is uh, frozen. As you, we call it, this hypothesis is called the snowball Earth. The second one is the, like this one, so the, most of the Earth is covered by ice. But uh, close to the equator there are some glacial sediments which we can detect today. But they are found in this hypothesis that they uh, were not uh, deposited in, in the very place of the, where the glacier existed, but it was transported, for example, as, uh, with uh, sea ice or with uh, icebergs or whatever it is, and they uh, entered close, came to the close to the uh, close to the equator. The third hypothesis is here. The glaciation is uh, quite um, small uh, and limited to the pole areas, and in some places uh, in other parts of the uh, of the of the Earth. And that could be possible if there were high mountains, even if the, at the equator and the, uh, the, the there was high precipitation in the time, uh, and the glaciers could enter the sea, and so the, uh, we can find these uh, these uh, glacial sediments also at the equator at the time. And the fourth one, that's uh, the, 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 the situation when uh, the axis of the Earth has been changed. You see, now it like, has about 23 degrees. Uh, the angle of the, the, uh, the, of, the, uh, of the Earth is now 
uh, around which it turns, and at the time it was it was another. It was more flat. You see, at the time it could happen if there was a collision of the Earth with some other other uh, other cosmic uh, cosmic body. And what has happened in that time? If we have the the, the angle of the or of the axis of the of the Earth as it is at present, like this, so it is about 23 percent. Then we can find that the insulation is like this. The smallest insulation uh, reaches the poles, and the largest reaches the, 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 the equator. Uh, if uh, the, 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 this angle uh, is uh, larger, it is about 54 degrees, then we have, uh, at that time, we have, uh, well, this, uh, this uh, insulation pattern is like this. What has happened later? After this, this old uh, time, we first one, uh, what uh, what uh, just decides about the, the the climate is just continental drift. We all know that that uh, the land, to which uh, the continents which uh, existed present, were completely different. Uh, previously, most of the uh, of uh, the earth was covered by seas, and it has happened like this. Uh, you can see that there were several periods when there were lands on the uh, on the poles. Sometimes when the, the lands were grouped in the, at the equator, and of course it has a, uh, it has an influence on the climate which existed on the Earth. Well, uh, what has happened uh, during this time when this continental drift occurred? First, what is very astonishing feature is this the extinction, mass extinctions which existed. These red, uh, these red peaks which are indicated here uh, show where this extinction occurred. Mass extinction, mass extinction. So most of the of the population of uh, of, of organism on the Earth has died uh, and uh, has not survived at that time. As you see, this one, which occurred some 250 years, uh, 250 million years ago, was the largest one. The largest one, which almost the the the, the, the li was more, almost uh, the whole life on the Earth has died. But there were also several others. Mostly in the media, we are talking about this, which occurred at the end of Cretaceous and Paleogene, where dinosaurs has died out. But well, that's that's more spectacular. But of course, that was not the largest event of like this uh, in the in the past. Uh, there are different um, hypotheses. Uh, what was the reason for that? Usually, that's uh, that's that well. First of all, that was the, that must have been a climatic catastrophe. There are evidence for that, uh, which could be caused by, for example, by impact of, of comets or of other other uh, cosmic bodies. If we look at these most uh, important uh, mass extinctions, so we can see this one at the end of Permian, uh, which which is indicated. Here, 95 of all, 95 percent of all species on the Earth has died. So only five has has survived. Uh, there's a great change in the in the population, and the the, the, the life on, Earth, on the Earth has changed very much. But the other ones were sm not very smaller. You see, that about 80 or over 80 percent. Uh, uh, what has happened during this uh, this last five million years? Uh, as you see, I took the figure. From the fourth IPCC report, because that's well, that's quite a good picture, which can be used very well used for to 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 explain. And in this picture, you can see what are what were the what was the atmospheric CO2 in the time at the very beginning. You see the values which are here. You see that it has changed here. It was also also large. These these different lines just show different methods which were used to to, to find out this this this, this contents. Uh, you, you, we can see that there was a low just here, but this, which is here, but it's still something like the present uh, content, uh, anyhow. And then we have a low, which is which is here, which occurs here, and it is uh, in more detail. It is this last part is shown shown here. We we see that the the, the, the temperature and the CO2 uh, is changing in this direction. Uh, this uh, blue uh, blue boxes indicate glaciation, which occurred at the time. The largest one was about three million years, ago, 300 million years ago, uh, which occurred uh, reached the tropics at the time. Uh, the, the the last one, which uh, which uh, well we, we live in this glacial period as well, uh, was a bit smaller, but uh, some in some areas it was also of similar magnitude. Uh, 
And if we look how it uh, has started, we can see that the Antarctic glaciers have started some about 35 million uh, years ago, uh, when the, 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 the Earth uh, was still warm. There's the deep ocean uh, temperature, which is indicated here. Uh, it was uh, quite warm. Uh, well, now it's the, the, the temperature is much lower. Uh, so the, this East Antarctic ice sheet, which is uh, which occurs on land, uh, the bottom is on on the land on the continent, has started in this uh, time. The West Antarctic ice sheet, which is partly on the uh, on the ice shelf, is on the on the on the, uh, on the uh, sea bottom. It's bo uh, the, the, well, the bottom of the ice is over there. Has started uh, later. And the, the youngest one is the Greenland ice sheet, which, which has been initiated much later already. Well, it's very young ice sheet, which has been started uh, about five million years ago. Starting from the first uh, glaciation, the old glaciation, uh, during the Ordovician period, uh, it, uh, its deposits were found uh, in Africa, in Sahara. Um, the, that was the South Pole at the time, and the ice sheet uh, well moved in uh, around uh, to the to the um, to the more more southern uh, southern uh, parts of the of the globe at the time when this glaciation has been initiated. The atmospheric CO2 content was like this. Uh, these values uh, can be uh, can be can be found. And uh, what has happened uh, in the ocean first? Uh, at first, the, the well, sea, sea surface temperature in the ocean was very high. You can see in the tropics it was about 40 degrees, uh, very high and unsatisfactory for the organism that lived. Then the temperature has uh, has get down slower. When it reached about 30 degrees in the tropics, uh, that was a very the beginning of, of development of, of life everywhere in the ocean. Uh, it was very very huge development of that. You can see. These are different groups of organisms that existed at the time, and you can see this this uh, thicker lines show where these organisms started to be more populated. Where they were the the population were much much larger, and so that was this period when they started to be more popular. But then there was a collapse. The temperature, sea temperature, has been get down. Of course, at the tropics it was always about 20, uh, 20 degrees, uh, but that was caused by this huge glaciation which occurred uh, uh, at the poles and uh, came to the uh, came to the tropics. Uh, and that's the moment of the uh, mass extinction which occurred at the time. So, and then, then uh, of course, the, not all of life has has uh, has been uh, has been demolished, but uh, certainly it was a huge uh, catastrophe for, for the, the organism that lived on the Earth. The second second uh, period uh, during this last 500,000 uh, years uh, that's the time of the uh, precambrian and, uh, uh, and uh, of of, uh, of uh, carboniferous and permian uh, the land were distributed like this and uh, if we come back uh, once again you can see that at the early carboniferous there was a um, there was an uh, ice uh, at the pole which then spread out as you can see it here, it has spread out and occupied larger areas, then, then disappear. That was the second, second uh, drastic cooling which occurred on the Earth during that time. And uh, if we, we, we have more information about it, uh, if we look at the sea level at that time, because that we can find it, find out it on the basis of the sediments which occur in this, uh, in the sea, uh, we find out that the onset of major glaciation occurred here, and there were two, at least two episodes because the sea level has dropped uh, over 100 meters during that time. Most of the water from the sea was uh, accumulated in the ice. Uh, there was a retreat of the ice and then another advance which caused also 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 a drop of the sea this time about 120 meters lower these are the main episodes in different parts of the world in that time what were the temperature uh, later on the upper jurassic already about 150 million years ago you can see there's a great contrast between the that's the temperature which is uh, which is uh, well uh, which was interpreted for for winter months in the northern hemisphere, and uh, uh, here 
uh, uh, temperatures which are during summer, uh, summer months uh, uh, in the northern hemisphere. Very cold, very great contrast, very cold uh, poles at that time, you see, temperatures something like about 30, 40 degrees at the time, at both coasts during winter, which occurred at the time, and uh, very, very warm uh, equator, equator zone, the temperature over 35 degrees, even uh, in certain, certain, uh, in certain places. And then, what happens now, then? We, sh we go down with the CO2 contents in the atmosphere, that's the, the which from about 100 million years, we go down with that. It's not uh, just a normal, it's a trend which occurs all the time, but there were several, several reversals of that, but they were much smaller. The temperature has also decreased, uh, that's the, the initial uh, development of the Antarctic uh, glaciation and here of Greenland glaciation. You see, uh, this Greenland glaciation has developed when the temperature was a bit higher on the Earth. Uh, and uh, well, how it looked like. Here is the picture which shows how the, the ice sheet in the Antarctic has developed, starting from this part, uh, several domes were larger than uh, these two large domes and then collapsed. That's the only this East Antarctic uh, ice sheet which occurred, uh, this larger one which occurs in the Antarctic. Uh, what is then? What uh, just uh, stimulates the present climate? That's the thermocaline circulation which occurs in the, in the ocean. Uh, warming uh, warm uh, waters uh, in central uh, India, in, in central Pacific, uh, just a stream which uh, goes through the Indian Ocean, goes into the, uh, in goes into the Ant uh, Arctic, uh, and makes that we have uh, such a mild climate in Europe. Uh, but it was not always. And uh, the growth of the Greenland ice sheet, you can see it, of course, developed. During the last three million years, it has uh, developed from several domes into, into one large dome, which we have here. During the Quaternary, the, the, we can find the, the climatic changes, the temperature changes, which are indicated here. If we look at this in uh, more detail, uh, and these arrows indicated that this, this uh, well, just an, an outlook of these curves is different in different periods. But that's another story I would not like to. <coughs> To, to talk about it then. And then, what has happened then? We are coming very close, that's about 73 million years ago. Uh, there was an eruption of a supervolcano, Toba, on, the, uh, on Sumatra, which occurred <coughs> here. And it was a huge volcano, which, uh, which, uh, the ashes of which occupied this area. And it has almost killed uh, humans, which occurred in the well, they, it killed humans in this area, and from this time we find out that, that only about 10,000 people could survive this, this catastrophe which occurred here. Why it was so, so, so dangerous? Because the climate has changed. The climate has changed, and you can see it here. Uh, this red line shows, shows how, the, how the temperature, surface temperature of the Earth has changed. So the, the mean, the average temperature on the Earth has changed. You see, and it lasted for several years. The first, it was, it was a decrease. Well, just mean temperature on the Earth has, has dropped about 10 to 12 degrees, and uh, well, uh, it came back to to the, to the, to the, the previous to the previous uh, level, uh, but it has lasted about 40 years, as we as we expect. So it was, well, of course, uh, if uh, the temperature in the tropics has dropped uh, 12 degrees, it's not very, very important, but it has dropped in the temperate zone, it's, of course, it's, it's much more important. And uh, we have uh, imagined, you can imagine how the temperature has changed. That's the first year after the eruption, the temperature lower in this area, about 15, 20, 25 degrees, the mean temperature which changed in, uh, in the area. After five years, it was still cooler in the northern hemisphere where small people live. Uh, 15 years, still cool. And uh, after, well, clo coming close to, to 40 years after the eruption, it has come to the normal state. And last time, the just 10,000 10, years, last thousand years, what has happened then? Uh, well, the, the temperature we, we can we can study from the from the ice cores from the Greenland and from the Antarctic. 
If we look at these curves which are here, there are different uh, changes changes of the temperature, uh, it means that there were coolings and warmings. Of course, we must remember that it's still in the polar areas, so the temperatures, the change of temperatures was still below zero, but uh, these changes were quite, quite large, and they were much larger in Greenland, as you can see. It's much larger in Greenland than in the Antarctic. Uh, and uh, the general trend which is indicated here in the Antarctic is a bit lowering, uh, well, towards the present times, and uh, in the Greenland is much stronger cooling event, which is event, uh, indicated here. And if you believe in global warming, this global warming is indicated here by this red line. That's, that's just the dimension of this, of this warming, which is indicated in Greenland. If we compare it with what has happened earlier, then you see that's just of no significance at all. Uh, during these 10,000 years in the in the temperate zone, uh, especially in Europe, we have found several events, coolings and warmings. Uh, they are named the Bond events. Uh, they were invented about 15 years ago, and they were connected with development or, or just uh, or disappearance of several civilizations, which are here. Uh, the most important one, which, is, uh, which has not been numbered, uh, we should give a number uh, zero, perhaps, uh, well, there's the Little Ice Age, but there is also episode of, uh, of human migration, just a cooling which caused the people uh, going, coming from, from, from Asia and to, uh, coming to, to, to Europe and uh, coming to, 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 to the Roman Empire. And that's perhaps that's one of the reasons why the empire has, has been collapsed. Uh, and earlier, that was about uh, th th this episode which occurred, uh, which occurred here. Uh, there's a very well-known episode, for example, in Egypt and in other parts of the world about 4,000 years uh, ago when the old kingdom was, uh, well, just uh, collapsed, the same as uh, the, the early civilization in, in India and in Mesopotamia and some other, in some other uh, areas. What has happened? Why it was so important? At present, we have such an uh, intertropical convergence zone that's the change of the limit of, the, of these uh, rainfalls which occur every year. It changes from summer to winter and goes with the sun, which if it goes with the sun, uh, sun uh, goes is more, uh, well, just vertically uh, 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 lights the, the southern hemisphere, then this intertropical zone runs, runs southward. Uh, if, we, if we have summer uh, in, the, uh, in the northern hemisphere, then this limit uh, moves, uh, move, moves uh, northwest. But uh, we can find out that during the last 600 years, this intertropical zone has moved more southward. More southward. That's, the, that's the, 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 this moving which is indicated here. If this, this limit moves more southward, then we have weaker monsoons outside this area, so the, the monsoons are more limited to the most southern area. And at the time there is a bit cooler, uh, the cooler uh, cooling comes from the north, moves more to the south. Being in Europe, and in, uh, we have also such uh, Atlantic oscillation. Well, some very important also, of course, or, uh, of course or, um, episode, episode or just circulation, atmospheric circulation. Uh, we have generally two such uh, possibilities. Here is the negative North Atlantic uh, oscillation. Uh, oscillation. When we have a, a negative uh, North Atlantic oscillation, then uh, will the, this, uh, uh, there is a weaker, uh, weaker low in the north near the Iceland, and we can high in the south, the subtropical low, and then the, the wet, the moist air goes further to the, to the Mediterranean. There are heavy rains in the Mediterranean, and the northern and central Europe are more dry. Uh, during positive North Atlantic oscillation, which is uh, mostly at present, uh, these storms go further to the, to the north. Uh, that's uh, in the time that the lows are uh, larger in the north, uh, higher, more extended, more uh, stronger, stronger, and heights are also stronger at the time that the storms go to the north. So northern and central Europe uh, had, uh, has uh, uh, much rain, and there is drought uh, in the Mediterranean uh, period. 
Little Ice Age, last, last cooling which occurred, it is well known also from the, it was painted by the artist from the Swiss Alps, that's from the Netherlands probably this, that's why the Netherlands are so, uh, so good in skating because they were at that time they had a chance to, to use their uh, frozen canals to, 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 to skate. And now uh, what, uh, what are we insisted to, to now at present? Here is the temperature during the last 40 years, the temperature on the Earth, and here is the SO2 limit, uh, SO2 uh, content in the atmosphere. These two lines are completely, completely different. There is no connection between them. So my conclusion, my conclusions, uh, I would like just to point out what you, I find that is the most important. Global coolings, not warmings, were climatic catastrophes. So we should not be afraid of of, of warming, but we should be afraid of cooling.